Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Today we are going to present about the plastic uh, The pl uh, plastic is a material of wide range of synthetic or semi-synthetic organic solids are uh, moldable uh, Plastic are usually classified by the uh, chemical structure of the polymer backbone and side chains So the plastic is consists of two types uh, Two types which is the first is thermoplastic and the second one is thermostatic polymers also the thermoplastic are the plastic that do not undergo chemical change in their composition when heated and can be molded again and again example for example is uh, polyethylene polypropylene pro polyethylene and poly polyvinyl chloride so thermoset uh, for the thermoset uh, it can melt and take shape once after they have solidified and they stay solid in the thermosetting process a chemical reaction occurs that is irreversible so the vulcanization of rubber is thermosetting process before heating with sulfur the polyisoprene is a tanky slightly runny material but after vulcanization with innovation, the product is rigid and non sexy So there are several types of process which is uh, extrusion, injection molding, structural, structural for molding, glow molding, rotational molding, thermoforming, compression molding, transfer molding, casting, and the last one is processing of composite material. We to discuss about the polymer melts. To shape a uh, thermoplastic polymers, it must be heated so that it softens the to the consistency of liquid in this form it is called uh, polymer melt the properties of the melts are viscosity and viscoelasticity so first is viscosity viscosity due to its high molecular weight uh, polymer melts is a thick fluid with uh, high viscosity most of polymer shaping process involve flow to small channels or die openings so, uh, flow rates are uh, often large, leading to high shear rates and shear stress. So, significant pressure are required to accomplish the process. Density and polymer melt decrease with shear rate, thus the become uh, the fluid becomes. Thick. What is viscoelasticity? Elasticity. It is a property of a material that determines the strain it experiences when subjected to combination of stress and strain. Uh, possessed by both polymer solids and polymer melts. The example is dye swell in extrusion in which the hot, pla uh, hot plastics expand when the exiting the dye opening. The is known as extruded swell is a common phenomenon in polymer processing. processing. The swell occurs in eastern of polymer extrusion in which a stream of polymeric material is passed through a dye a specialized tool in manufacturing the shape or cut polymer, polymeric uh, material uh, in plastic there are 10 methods of shaping process um, so let's talk for the first one the first method is extrusion uh, extrusion is a high volume manufacturing process in where raw plastic is melted and formed into a continuous profile so uh, the examples of extrusion products of plastic is pipe, tube, fence, deck railings windows, frames, and plastic films. Mm -hmm. So this process start with feeding plastic materials into a hopper. Plastic materials could be granules, pellets, or powders. And from the hopper, the plastic is transferred to a barrel of the extruder. This material is gradually melted by the mechanical energy generated by turning screws and by heaters arranged along the barrel. The molten polymer is then forced into a die, which the die uh, includes the shape that we wanted. Then, the after the polymer passes through the die, it will harden during cooling. There are two main compartments of extruder. The first one is barrel and screw. So, for extruder screw, extruder screw, they will divide it into three different sections. The first section is the feed section, the compression section, and the last one is the metering section. The next, for the next method is hollow profiles. So these methods are suitable for tubes, pipes, hoses, 
uh, for uh, products that have um, cross sections of the holes. So, hollow, hollow profiles require mandrel to form the shape. Mandrel help in place using a spider. Polymer melts flow around legs supporting the mandrel to reunite into a monolithic tube walls. So, mandrel often includes an air channel through which air is blown to maintain hollow form of a suit during hardening. So, the next method is the extension for cable coating. Uh, polymer is applied to bare wire as it pulls at high speed to a die. Uh, wire provides rigidity during pulling, usually aided by passing coated uh, wire through water. Product is worn into a, onto a large pulse at speeds up to um, 50 meters per second or you can say 10,000 feet per minute. Methods on shaping of plastics are uh, for sheet and film. So there are difference on the methods on extrusion of film and sheets. So for film, thickness of film, the products should be below 0.5 mm and for sheet, the thickness is from 0.5 mm to 12.5 mm. So uh, examples of uh, films are wrapping material, grocery bags, garbage bags. Um, for sheets, we could say, the, we could take the example like uh, window glazing um, and for material use on this process is um, like polyethylene, polypropylene, polyvinyl chloride um, so there are different process on this method the first one is slit dye extrusion, uh, blown film and calendaring so uh, for the first um, process is sheet dye extrusion. In this method, uh, preparation of sheet and film by conventional extrusion using a narrow slit as the dye opening. Slit may be up to 3 meter wide and as narrow as around 0.4 millimeter. In uh, a problem is uniformly of thickness throughout width of stock due to drastic shape change of polymer map as it flows through that. Edge of film usually must be thin because of thickening at its edge. Edge process is blow film extrusions. Uh, this method combines extrusion and blowing to produce a tube of thin film. Process sequence extrusion of tube. Then it will the tube is drawn upward while still molten and simultaneously expanded by air inverted into the dye and then the air is blown into the tube to maintain the uniform film thickness and tube diameter um, so the last method in this method is calendar uh, feedstock is passed through a series of rolls to reduce thickness to desired gauge uh, this method includes expensive, expensive equipment at a uh, higher production production rates. Process is noted for good surface finish and high gauge accuracy rather than the other methods. So let's go on to the eighth method on shaping of plastics. The method is called fiber and filament products. So uh, the definition for fiber is a long thin strand post length is at least 100 times its cross section. For filaments, it is a fiber of continuous length. Uh, application usually for textiles and reinforcing materials in polymer composites. Thus, synthetic fibers spinning is extrusion of polymer melts or solution to a spinneret then drawing and winding onto a bobbin. So there are three vibrations depending on the polymer. The first one is melt spinning, dry spinning and wet spinning. So for wet wet spinning, starting polymer is heated to molten state and pump to spinneret. Typical spinneret is 6 mm thick and contains approximately to 50 holes of diameter. The diameter should be around 0.25 mm. Filaments are drawn and air cooled before being spooled onto bobbin. The significant extension and thinning of filaments occur while polymer is still molten and is for polyester and non nylon filaments. 
So for dry spinning, dry spinning is similar to melt spinning, but start starting polymer is in solution and solvent can be separated by evaporation. First step is extrusion through spin direct. Extruded is pulled through a heated chamber which removes the solvent leaving the polymer used for filaments of cellulose, acetates and acrylics. The last one is wet spinning similar to melt spinning but polymer is again in solution only solvent is not volatile. To separate polymer, extruded is passed through a liquid chemical that coagulates or precipitates the polymer into coherent, stand, uh, coherent strands which are then collected onto bobbins used to produce filaments of rayon. Um, among the most popular method in this chapter is injection molding. Um, the polymer, in this process, the polymer is heated to a highly plastic state and forced to flow under high pressure into mold cavity where it solidifies and the molding is then removed from cavity. Produce, it produces discrete components almost always to net shape Typical cycle time is around 10 to 30 seconds, but cycles of 1 minute or more are not uncommon. More may contain multiple cavities, so multiple moldings are uh, produced each cycle. Uh, there are two principal uh, components in this method. The first one injection unit and the second one is um, the second one is clamping unit. So for the injection unit, melts and delivers polymer melts. Uh, it operates much like an extruder. The clamping units, uh, the clamping units opens and closes the mold of injection on each cycle. Uh, on the machine of injection molding, it consists of barrel fed from one end by a hopper containing supply of plastic pellets. Inside the barrel is a screw which rotates for mixing and heating polymer. Act as a ram to inject molten plastic into mold, non return valve near the tip of screw prevents melt flowing backward along screw head, screw threads. So uh, in this video upcoming, I wish uh, the video will show you how the injection molding, molding starts occurs. by the pellets that we buy called resin. Here's an example of that. All plastic parts start from this. They're brought into a hopper and they're dried to certain temperatures um, and certain dew points. Now we're gonna move around to the other side and show you what else happens. So after the resin has been dried properly, it's pulled up into this very small, what's called hopper, which goes into a feed throat, uh, which goes into a barrel. What happens is the pellets go in, uh, the pellets, uh, melt as the screw goes back and as you can see here it'll go all the way back to the specified size and that solid pellet has now become liquid plastic here. Uh, at that point it's injected in and through the mold and formed and that's what makes the part. So as it's, as it's injected through the controller that you see here uh, will regulate the pressures, the times, the temperatures, and all the other variables inside of this to make an acceptable part for our customers. As that goes through and as that completes, it'll form into a solid form inside the mold again. Uh, once that's done, it'll eject the parts out uh, and they'll be ready for shipment and or assembly. That's Okay, for the last method, the last method, um, this, uh, the last method is the mold. There are three various types of mold. The two plate mold, three plate mold and the hot runner molds. For two plate mold, the two plate injection mold has only one parting line. If a runner is used, it is connected to the molded part, uh, to the molded product and requires manual removal and separation after the part is ejected. This type of injection mold is the least expensive to make and commonly used for parts with relatively, relatively simple geometries. Uh, simple geometries. Um, for the three part, three plate, three plate mold, it has two parting lines. With, uh, different from the two plate mold, which has only one parting line, one for runner system and one for the molded product. Uh, 
the process is quite similar where where the injection mold opens the runner is automatically separated from the product to allow separate handling this eliminates the need for manual separation and removal and the screw and runner system may be fed directly to a recycling system this type of mold is more expensive than the previous parts for the last one it's the hot runner mold um, this video will show you how the hot works. runner mold heated runner system is contained in a plate of its own and does not open during the molding cycle because of this, hot runner molds generate no runners or sprues. For this reason, hot runner molding, also known as runnerless molding, is fast and efficient. Shrinkage is a change in size. It is a characteristic of all plastics and occurs when plastics cool from liquid to solid. All injection molding components are subject to shrinkage to varying degrees. It cannot be eliminated but it can be minimized and controlled. There are many different factors that affect how plastics shrink. Some relate to the chemistry of the material. Other factors relate to the additives in the polymer and to the processing conditions used to mold the parts. To mold parts with accuracy, it is important to understand shrinkage behavior. The polymer's properties are determined when the polymer is manufactured and govern how the material shrinks as it cools from a viscous liquid to a solid. All polymers shrink differently. A semi-crystalline material shrinks very differently from an amorphous material. Even different grades of the same material shrink differently. Semi-crystalline materials shrink much more than amorphous materials. As the polymer cools, some molecules form crystalline regions. This allows the material to fit together more tightly. Therefore, the material becomes denser and shrinks more. The shrinkage of polymers in amorphous materials is restricted by chains running in other directions. The extent to which a material shrinks, or changes in volume between liquid and solid states, is referred to as its volumetric shrinkage. Plastics can shrink up to 25% during the injection molding process. However, plastics are compressible. When you apply pressure to a liquid plastic, you can compress the molecules into a smaller volume. In injection molding, you can then inject more material into the mold. Adding this extra material compensates for the shrinkage that occurs. When plastics are injected into a mold, they are subject to a new set of conditions that affect how they shrink. Plastic molecules tend to align themselves in the direction the polymer is flowing. This alignment, called orientation, influences how polymers shrink linearly. Many polymers shrink more in the direction of flow and less perpendicular to the flow. How much they shrink depends, in part, on the characteristics of the polymer, additives in the polymer, and the processing conditions used to make the part, including temperatures and pressures. You can minimize the effects of plastic shrinkage early in the product design cycle by using Modflow Insight. By setting up and running an analysis, you can view deflection results, which help you visualize how far points on the part move from their original locations. If you have difficulty viewing the result, you can scale it so it's easier to interpret. You can also constrain the result to show shrinkage in a single axis. The examine result tool is useful when paired with the deflection result. You can identify individual points and display their coordinates before and after shrinkage to see how far those points have moved. Then, you can alter the processing conditions or redesign the part or mold to change the shrinkage that you identified using this result. One potential solution is that the size of the mold could be increased to account for the specific shrinkage figures identified by the deflection result. So now when the part shrinks, it's within design specifications. If the cause of shrinkage is material-based, a substitution is required. You can consult the material database within Insight to find an appropriate replacement. The database provides information on the material shrinkage properties and recommended processing conditions. 
You can search the database and display a side-by-side -side comparison of potential materials. So you can find the most appropriate match, and then run the analysis to verify the new material's suitability. Plastic shrinkage is unavoidable, but understanding how and why plastic shrinks, and what to look for, is an important step towards controlling the effect it has on a part. The tools available in Insight not only identify shrinkage, but they help you design solutions based around principles of plastics and mold design. But what if different regions of the part shrink differently, causing the part to change shape? This concept is called warpage and is explained further in the next video. Shrinkage. What is shrinkage? Shrinkage is the reduction in linear size during cooling from molding to room temperature. It's also a polymer have high thermal expansion coefficient. So significant uh, shrinkage occurs during solidification and cooling in mold. What is a solidification? Uh, in other words, solidification is freezing, which is the uh, change of uh, physical in metal. First, for shrinkage, first, fillers in the plastic tend to reduce shrinkage. Second, injection pressure uh, make higher pressure force more material into more cavity to reduce shrinkage. Okay. There are several uh, other types of molding, which is uh, compression molding, uh, blue molding, injection molding, and terforming.